Missouri School of Journalism, welcome to Global Journalist. I'm David Reed. Freedom of the press is rising steadily in Kenya. The Constitution now specifically prohibits the state from interfering with the editorial independence of journalists and their media outlets, both state-owned and private. Overall, newspaper circulation in Africa went up 30% in 2011. That's according to the African Center for Media Excellence. Nation Media Group has flourished in this unfettered environment. It's the largest independent media house in East and Central Africa, with operations in print, broadcast, and digital media. There are now outlets in neighboring countries Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda. To better understand Kenya's media landscape, I spoke to business news reporter Mugambi Mutegi. Mugambi, who joined us earlier this month, is a visiting fellow from the Alfred Friendly Press Partners. The Friendly Foundation's program places international journalists in U.S. newsrooms and brings them to our journalism school for training. The goal is to both impart American journalistic traditions and respond to worldwide interests in the dissemination of fair and accurate news. Mugambi worked this spring and summer at the Chicago Tribune. In Nairobi, he's been working at the Business Daily, which is part of Nation Media. Mugambi, tell us a bit about uh, the development of Nation Media Group, how it started and how big it is now. Well, Nation Media Group uh, is said to be the biggest news, uh, privately owned uh, newspaper uh, in East and Sub-Saharan Africa. I think it is, and... Uh, we, it's owned by the Aga Khan. He, he resides in, uh, in in France. That's where in Paris, France. Uh, he has several uh, he has several uh, charitable organizations, and he wants to he 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 opens businesses so that he can uh, be good to humanity, like assist humanity. And through newspapers, the Aga Khan uh, thought that he can uplift uh, the people in Africa through uh, getting the right information mm-hmm. uh, factually. That's, how, that's why he decided to, to get into, uh, into the newspaper business, and that's what he runs right now. Uh, National Media Group is in Uganda, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, and Rwanda. Uh, there, are, there are plans to, uh, to go to other countries in future, and in all these countries, the main, the main, uh, the main base is Nairobi, Kenya, uh, where where I work, it's yeah, a it's a big in. big uh, uh, building called the Nation Center. It houses several newspapers. As, as I'm telling you, it's the biggest uh, newspaper group. So we have uh, print in each country. In Kenya, there are business papers. Uh, there's a Swahili newspaper. There's a Swahili radio station, and you'll find this replicated in all the the countries that they're in. Slowly, they'll they'll have the main uh, television station in Kenya, take it to Uganda under NTV Uganda, and then have a Swahili or a local language station under the same Daily Monitor is the main paper there, compared to Daily Nation in Kenya. Business Daily is a business paper there in Kenya. Maybe in future, the Nation Media Group branch of Uganda will prosper too to get a business paper. So it's just a, it's a growing, it's a growing uh, group. And you can work anywhere. I can write for Uganda, I can write for Tanzania. I, um, I work for the, the media group. I can be called for an interview in Uganda, yeah. It's, okay. it's a big, big family of, uh, of journalists in the East, uh, in East Africa especially, yeah. Are there, is there a language barrier as, as far as being able to speak? Is there a common, more common language that uh, is spoken I think English English is a uh, uh, majority of the newspapers and uh, radio stations are in English but uh, Swahili is a, is a language spoken in Tanzania a lot like they speak the fluent uh, Swahili Kenyans also speak Swahili part of Ugandans speak Swahili and uh, maybe the language barrier may not be really there that only comes up when you know, go to the mother tongue because I have a different mother tongue. There are 42 tribes in Kenya. Mm-hmm. There are different mother tongues in Kenya. But if I speak Swahili to someone, he'll understand. If he doesn't understand Swahili, he'll understand English. Yeah. yeah. But now when he meets someone from his tribe, 
he'll understand. The same thing now happens in Uganda. When I go to Uganda to report, I'll be working primarily in English. So it does not matter whether uh, my Ugandan journalist counterpart is Busoga or comes from any other part of Uganda. We'll speak in English and we'll write in English. So it's, uh, if, you, if you go to Uganda right now, you'll find Kenyans in, in high positions in management. You go to Tanzania, you'll find Kenyans in high positions in the there, media. In the media. Uh, we are a big community. They'll come to Kenya work for us. The mm. same thing, yeah. What kind of stories have you been working on? Well, uh, I've done a couple of stories, maybe uh, over 10 stories. I had the opportunity of, well, privilege of being on the front page uh, mid the first week of June. What was that story about? I went to uh, Merchandise Mart. Uh, it's, a, it's a big complex in, uh, in mm -hmm. Chicago. I went there for a furniture conference, and I met, came across a lady who was doing, was making bulletproof seats mm -hmm. that you drip a bulletproof vest on your seat at work. If you're a security guard, bunker, and in case someone comes in with an AK-47 or something, uh, you okay. can hide behind the, the seat, wear the jacket, or yeah, use it as protection. And the editors at work found the story to be interesting, told me to write it, and well, front page, and yeah. It, okay. was a, it was a big achievement. It was, uh, it was good. Okay. Yep. What, what are some other examples? Of, uh, I guess a front page story in the Chicago Tribune is a, yeah. a, a pretty good uh, uh, feather in your cap. Yeah, it, it is. I've already framed the, the <laughs> I've already sent the, the stories back home and have someone who's doing it already. Yeah. But I've done other stories. I've done stories on uh, the prevalence, how the yogurt, uh, frozen yogurt uh, market in, in Chicago is going up. Uh, I've done a couple of uh, another story on uh, uh, the called food trucks, mm -hmm. the food trucks business. The latest I did was about barbecue sauce, same kind of food theme, but yeah, it's just the business of food. Yeah, right. Yeah. And how would you compare the work you've been doing for the Chicago Tribune with uh, the work you do at the Business Daily in Kenya? Well, in terms of uh, topics, it's much different. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a more uh, news oriented uh, writer back mm -hmm. at home uh, but here what I write is is also business but in a features uh, mm -hmm. with a features uh, feel to it right. that the intros I write back at home are very uh, bland here I have to like give color to my intros maybe when I go back I'll, I'll try to do more feature stories mm -hmm. uh, so, so the stories, uh, your business stories for the uh, business daily have been more straightforward and factual straightforward. They just uh, these guys made this profit this CEO mm -hmm. step down. Uh, these board changes were made. Such things. Not no barbecue sauce. No <laughs> food trucks in there. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, no um, uh, details uh, on no the details. color of the of the no, bulletproof yeah. vest. I will such. not explain the color of a room that I got into or the boardroom. It's just plain and simple, straight to the point. Money yeah. figures. Yeah. What about the, the the freedom to for you to write what you want to write and what your colleagues at the Tribune, the freedom to write what they want to write uh, compared with the f press freedoms in in Kenya? Well, uh, I'll not speak uh, in terms of uh, history of press freedom. I've followed uh, uh, politics and the press. I've, I've been an avid reader of the newspapers mm -hmm. growing up. I've only been there at Business Daily for three years, mm -hmm. but I still have a uh, compared with what I read and what I've experienced so far, I think Kenyans are uh, way ahead in terms of press freedom. Uh, well, I came to the States and maybe you guys are more mature than, than mm -hmm. us, but the only the explanation I give is like uh, you, you started the press business quite a while back and it's just like growing up. You can't expect a 40-year-old to be less mature than a 20-year-old. So since Africans... Uh, and Kenyans, uh, for that matter, said uh, the print, uh, print and newspaper business much later than you guys. Mm -hmm. That you independence came much later. Right. It only goes. Uh, it goes without saying that we'll have to be like a bit, uh, not backward, but a step a rung lower than mm -hmm. the Americans. As you progress, you're also progressing. But Americans were where we were a right. couple of years ago. Right. But when you fly here, you know, you you. You fly into the future, and you mm -hmm. meet this higher level of maturity in the newsroom also. What are some yeah. of the uh, 
lessons and practices that uh, you've learned at the Tribune that you'll be able to take back and, and apply in well the the biggest uh, the biggest uh, lesson I've had here is that getting your facts right mm -hmm. is the biggest like uh, my editors take fact checking so seriously the editors at the Tribune at the Tribune they also do it back at home but uh, here we even have a software, the Tribune, that you 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 check, you've, mm -hmm. that you call this person, check whether they're 36 years old or 37, whether you calculated, you put the right uh, uh, date, mm -hmm. every single, as long as in a sentence there's a figure or a fact which can be contested, you have to go back and call them. But back at home, which maybe is a weakness, uh, mm -hmm. they'll they'll tell me, Mugambi, so you checked your facts counter check your facts I'll go through it and maybe I'm feeling tired and uh, mm -hmm. I won't check whether you're 36 or 37 but mm -hmm. uh, I think since I've gone through it when I go home I'll make sure it's a practice I do whether or not the fact where I can tick it off on a software is included mm -hmm. I'll take the practice back home okay yeah and but overall you feel um, that when you are in Kenya that you are free to report business stories that uh, you think should be reported on yeah i've in my three years of three years of practice i've come well i've uh, collided with the high and mighty mm -hmm. multi-billionaires that i write i've written stories about a real estate uh, magnate who uh, got into some uh, mm -hmm. teeth with his ex-wife she tried to pay me off like he calls me <laughs> and you know these things and I know this guy is, uh, he knows so many big people, but you still go ahead and publish his story. You, no one, no one is, uh, we, we, no one is, be, we, we can go after mm -hmm. anyone as long as what you're saying is true. Okay. And, and no one will, uh, like, attack us or mm -hmm. threaten us. Uh, yeah. Now, the coverage of your, your new president, Uhuru Kenyatta, he's yeah. been in office almost 100 days. Yeah, I think in two weeks. Yeah. yeah, and I understand that there have been some stories that have been uh, not very flattering, some critical stories about him, and there have been no repercussions. Is that correct? Yeah, well, uh, as of any president, a president will come in with uh, a set of promises. Mm-hmm and yeah. pledges to commit uh, that he'll do. So I think one of the pledges he had done was uh, he'll give all standard one uh, kids. I think that's the first uh, first level of grade school that they'll get all get uh, free laptops. Mm -hmm. uh, and every other single day, it's the, that promise is morphing <laughs> today. I think the latest I read today was that now we won't have uh, laptops. They'll be given tablets. So there's a whole debate around that, and we give the coverage. We give the coverage that he he promised this, mm -hmm. he's not doing this, and okay. that goes for the president himself, and for uh, top officials right. in his government. And how does uh, Kenya's press compare with uh, some of the neighboring countries, uh, Uganda, for example? Well, I think other than just being. Uh, um, Maybe maybe the, the journalists want the same thing, but we all we all live in different uh, environments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have I have uh, journalist friends in Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and maybe just one. Mm -hmm. But they all want the same thing. But their presidencies, their realities are different. Uh, in Uganda, uh, our our president and mm -hmm. Museveni are not. Are not cut from the same cloth. Right. There are two different kinds of. Museveni people. is the president. Museveni is the president. Yoweri Museveni yes. is the president of Uganda. He's people call him a dictator. I don't know whether, whether that's the right term to use. He'll be compared in, uh, in the same breath with Mugabe. That he'll. That, that there's a issue about a letter being written about him wanting to leave mm -hmm. the power to his son. And he went and clamped down newspapers. The, uh, the, the newspapers that reported this. Report, yeah, which was the Daily Monitor, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Red Paper, which is a tabloid, mm -hmm. uh, radio stations, KFM, which is a, a, a nation media group uh, radio station, was also closed down, and I think another station, all in a court order in looking for that said letter. It's just a letter, mm -hmm. nothing else. That Daily Monitor, maybe is other other 
anti uh, anti government quote unquote mm -hmm. press are targeted by the police and all these things they don't you don't find that in Kenya yes it it, it was there there are those people who might want to perpetuate it but uh, it, they, they don't have it's that time of that that era in Kenya is done okay yeah how long has it been roughly that you've been able to uh, report freely in Kenya well I think uh, uh, We've had this is our fourth president. Right. Uh, the f uh, under the f under the, under our first president, uh, J J Jomo Kenyatta, uh, it was a big dictatorial. He's the father of the. He's the father president. of the current president. Yeah. The second president was Daniel Arap Moi. He's still al alive in a retirement home. He was also not very uh, friendly with the press. Then came uh, Mwai Kibaki, who retired. Uh, in, Prior to now, he mm -hmm. went for two terms, ten years. He retired this year. So, the period when, like I think, for me, press uh, freedom matured was 2002, when Mwai Baki came into power, mm -hmm. and he let us uh, speak as we wanted. And you could see because if you are alive then, you could see the difference between how uh, the media is being let to go to mm -hmm. get off with things or saying against the former president, and mm -hmm. compare with this. For one, right. one example is that at, for for Moi, every seven o'clock news, one o'clock news, and nine o'clock news, any story that had to that preceded him, you had to have a portrait of Moi there, uh, uh, plastered on the TV screens, mm -hmm. uh, the national anthem is sung, and then now you can now say where the president was on that day. If you have to like start then broadcast with a sort of a pledge of allegiance right. to him, I don't think that story which is going to follow will be negative. Yeah, yeah, because it's the self-censorship uh, will take uh, yeah. place. So when after he got out, you could say anything about, practically anything about Moe Kibaki, and people are, people are like writing articles about him that he has a hands-off kind of uh, leadership, but that's just how he was. And that's when the press were allowed to you know, say something bad about corruption in Moe Kibaki's mm -hmm. era. They could uh, highlight incidences of free primary education funds being uh, 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 eaten mm -hmm. up or somewhere, uh, such things. That's 2002, 2012, and we can see the same thing happening with Uhuru Kenyatta. Okay. I don't think we'll go back to where we were with Moi. It's only going ahead, yeah. Before we continue our discussion, I want to remind everyone that you can view or listen to this program anytime by downloading our podcasts at globaljournalist.org. You can also find interesting articles, photos, and interviews related to our program on our website. Please send us questions or comments via globaljournalist at kbia.org or our Facebook page. And you can follow us on Twitter at globaljourn. Let's talk a bit about business reporting yep. and, and transparency. Uh, how is it, is it easier to report on uh, on companies in the United States and, and uh, particularly public companies uh, uh, and, and compared with how you can report on companies in Kenya? Well, yeah, I think, uh, I think, yep, I don't know, if, uh, I, I, I listen in, I don't, I can't come in and be thrown to the deep end at the business desk at the Tribune because, they are, yeah, so you, you know, there are things which I don't, I'm not familiar with. Right, the, but the, I, I, the inner I, workings of particular businesses yeah, and sectors. you know, I can't sectors. come and start writing about Boeing, like the nitty gritties of Boeing. Right. I might not know historical, yeah. But I listen in because the journalists speak loudly. I listen into the conversation yeah. and how they get their material. I think there are many more avenues here. It's maybe a bit easier for them to get to get uh, information that mm -hmm. uh, might not be. I think there's a there's a there's a law. That you can you can request to have like minutes freedom of information freedom laws. of information laws that you can request to have minutes of meetings yes yes uh, you can also uh, I, I forget the term why if, uh, you can if it's you can tell gov the government to furnish you with certain documents within a certain number of days right sunshine laws that, yes, yeah those laws are not uh, what happens what happens in a meeting even though it's publicly traded I cannot I don't there's no law that can I can use to like tell these guys 
I need these meetings of Friday's meeting. You need the minutes of the meetings. Yes. The minutes of the meeting within a week. We don't have such kind of laws. Yeah, which they 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 have it easier here. Yeah, in terms. Of that, but now it it makes me back at home in Kenya, and I need to get friendly with people in such companies. So maybe I have an insider who can give me information that by the way this guy was kicked out last week, because you won't know. If you just sit back, you won't you won't, you know that some something big happened unless it finally comes out in the limelight maybe a month later. You cannot uh, say that I think something happened. I want the minutes. You you don't have it back at home. And are are there any records in Kenya about what uh, companies give to politicians? No, that's something else I found. That's what, I think that's one of the stories I read here, and uh, I was really impressed about i think boeing was there the tribune did i think uh, a front page story about the top companies that uh, gave uh, barack obama some funds for mm. for the election in kenya no one knows uh, such things will never see the light of day you, you, well you find you find someone as a bank that's it it's a done mm. deal with you you settle that uh, those agreements in a golf course and that's it no one will ever know that you gave uh, yeah this the, i can give you an instance uh, okay there was a there's a there's a, a, a royal media group uh, is is another is a competitor to nation media group it has mm-hmm. a couple of newspapers and uh, the owner of that uh, media house gave uh, uh, supported uh, Raila Odinga Mm-hmm. In the he, previous election, he, he's the, p- the person who ran against uh, Kenyatta uh, he, and almost that, yeah. won. Yeah, well, almost the, won. The, yeah, as I said earlier, whoever chose to believe who won, no one knows. Apparently, uh, counterclaims here and there. But he supported, mm-hmm. he supported, uh, uh, his, he supported Raila Odinga, and it was the first time that someone private who has enterprises and who has interest in the country, like, came out and said. I support uh, mm-hmm. this guy, and that was uh, it. Was such a debate whether you know whether the Royal Media Group now is going to be uh, impartial mm-hmm. in covering Uhuru Kenyatta, right. and what role do private businessmen or women have in supporting? Uh, right. I can't. This guy, he he's, he he runs his own business, so he can do whatever he wants right. with money. Yeah. So, but there was a pretty big change. Uh, between how the media covered the 2009 elections mm-hmm. uh, and the violence that happened after um, the elections compared with the, the elections this time, even though there was a lot of people who thought that uh, Kenyatta didn't really win, you didn't have the protests and the fighting and killing that you had in the previous elections. And part of that has been uh, attributed to a more responsible coverage by the media uh, in, in Kenya of this past election. Would you agree with that? Yeah, well, the the media, the media, uh, the church were faulted heavily for the, when we fought. Apparently, uh, even one, one radio broadcaster is, is still charged. He's called William uh, mm-hmm. Sang, Arab Sang. He's also charged at the ICC for apparently allegedly uh, airing, uh, giving inflammatory statements during uh, the lead-up to the, the election. The 2009 the election. And, uh, 2007 election. 2007 election, yeah. okay. So he's, he's accused also with the president, the vice president, and all, he's there. And well, it was true, I think, because you could tell maybe the other media houses which had picked sides, uh, some of them were, were writing inflammatory kind mm-hmm. of... Uh, uh, headlines and all these things. It is true, right. but uh, I can speak for Nation Media Group because I was there, and uh, our editorial directors sat down and, like, proactively, mm-hmm. would sit us down, give us guidelines. We had an an election guideline about how to cover elections, and we all set rules. Mm-hmm. Told uh, advertising, uh, uh, gave suit, uh, rules on advertising during the electioneering period. To potential clients, that during all this time you're know, going, only going to be taking adverts which look like this, which look like this, and also the reporters were told, write, you know, 
factual stuff. Right. Don't don't take sides. Don't take sides. If you take sides, it's okay. Everyone is has a vote, but don't uh, don't uh, cause divisions in the newsroom because you you are pro Raila or pro Uhuru. Just be mature with mm-hmm. uh, with your democracy per se. Yeah. So it, it was it was calm down right now. The opposite now happened with the CNNs and all these guys. So oh. they came there and uh, everyone was like, tension so, is high. Yes, it's trying to stir up uh, stir, trouble. Stir, <laughs> stir up trouble. <laughs> Tensions are high were the common, common uh, phrase. The battle lines have been drawn. Wondering where they've been drawn and we didn't fight. Yeah, There were p- several cases. There was a CNN lady who uh, went to the forest and had this... Uh, goons like they, they uh, plastered chalk on their faces, saying that we have we are preparing gorillas, uh, D- preparing for violence, preparing F- for violence, yeah. and you could almost see that this was a, these guys were acting out, acting it out for her. Mm-hmm. She was uh, called by the police. Uh, I, f- I forget her name, but she was called by the police. The government asked her, you know, this this highly uh, sensitive mat- uh, matter. Just kindly tell us who these people are and where you found them. So you can stop them or bring them to book. She, uh, she, what is it called? It's called uh, uh, protecting your source. Yes. She protected her sources, and that was it. So uh, finally, uh, uh, give us, let, me, let us know what your feelings are about. Uh, are you optimistic that this trend will continue? That uh, uh, the media will continue to be free? You'll be able to freely report on on uh, uh, politics and business. What are your predictions for the future? Hopes? Yeah, if, well, uh, I'll be selfish since I've only been there three years. I hope, from a uh, career point of view, that I'll be allowed to to write uh, freely and report and educate the citizens. From a national perspective, I think, well, having a free press is the best way to go. So I, it's my hope and prayer uh, that we go on the same way uh, the same path we are on right now, and I believe we will. I don't, I don't see us going back from here. Okay. Well, yeah. it's been a pleasure talking with you, no. and thank you for your insights on on, on what's happening in, in Kenya. No, okay. thank you very much. That was my interview with Mugambi Mutegi, recorded earlier this month. He is a Kenyan reporter and a visiting Friendly Foundation fellow. And that brings us to the end of this week's Global Journalist. This show is produced by the Reynolds. Journalism Institute, and the Missouri School of Journalism. Global Journalist is directed by Travis McMillan, audio by Pat Akers. Raymond Tungagar is our executive producer. Free Press Watch is up next. And please join us again next week for another Global Journalist. I'm David Reed. And now Free Press Watch, a weekly segment on Global Journalist, where we bring you a rundown of major events affecting press freedom around the world. I'm Elisa Lopez. Today's news comes from the Committee to Protect Journalists, All Africa, Reuters, and the New York Times. Dutch journalist Judith Spiegel and her husband have spoken on a YouTube video released Monday after being kidnapped for a month, and an identified armed group abducted them in Yemen the second week of June. They say that if their government does not act, they could be executed. Russian newspaper editor and website contributor Ahmed Avi Ahmed Aviyev was shot to death in his car the morning of July 9 in the Republic of Dagestan. The assailants remain unidentified. Police and fellow journalists suspect the murder was linked to the journalists' investigations of political corruption and violent crime in the region. This isn't the first time the journalist was attacked. He survived a murder attempt earlier this year and received several death threats over the past years. In Gambia, recent amendments to the Information and Communication Act will severely restrict press freedom, according to free press advocates. The law was amended in the beginning of July. It will criminalize those who incite dissatisfaction against the government, spread false news about the government, or make derogatory statements against public officials on the Internet. Those found guilty of these crimes could face a maximum fine up to $83,000 and or a jail term of up to 15 years. For more information on these and other events affecting press freedom around the world, please visit our website at globaljournalist.org. Thank you for joining us this week on Global Journalist. I'm Elisa Lopez.